More World Wrestling Federation action thumps in at one after Blam. The following program has been produced by Gameplay, direct to home retailers of video games, equipment and online play services. As such, this program is classified as TV advertising. Welcome once again to Blam. It's the new year and what better way to kick off 2001 than with the helping of your favourite gaming show. I'm Julia Mead and this is week 10 of our European tour, so where else would we be but in sunny Stockholm? As usual, we've got the perfect mix of news reviews, gossip and celebrity interviews to keep you right at the centre of the gaming action. Plus, as our generosity knows no bounds, we've got more top prizes for you guys at home to win. Last week, Bjorn Lund from Sweden wiped the floor with his opponents before walking into our grand final with a thousand pounds in his back pocket, and so he joins this elite lineup. Today, we're joined by another four hopefuls, all desperate to make it through to a place in our grand final when they'll be playing for this. Courtesy of Microsoft Sidewinder, our Blam European champion will have four weeks to enjoy this spectacular world tour. With travel, accommodation, and spending money for two all covered, the only thing they need to pack is a friend. But before we meet this week's contenders, here's what we've got lined up for you in the next half an hour. We take to the streets of Stockholm for the last time this series as our host contestant gives us another gamer's eye view on the city. The in-game takes a close look at the first driving game ever to be designed specifically for online play. It's mad, or more accurately, it's insane. We take a look at animation in games. How important is it and just how sophisticated is it going to get? We meet the people who design your worlds. And somewhere we'll find time to offer you at home the chance to walk off with an armful of goodies just by answering a ridiculously simple question. That's in our audience competition. All that's still to come, but first let's take our usual look at the latest news and gossip from the world of gaming, courtesy of Gameplay's online magazine, Spank. Nintendo have announced the number of Game Boy Advance units they anticipate shifting in the first year of its forthcoming release. And it's quite a few, 24 million to be precise. At the height of production, they estimate they'll be churning out just over two units a second. Rumours are starting to filter through from the notoriously tight-lipped Rare Camp that a sequel to their incredibly popular creation, Perfect Dark, is being planned as a launch title for the GameCube. And the title? After Dark, of course. News for the ever-patient fans of Duke Nukem. Having waited an eternity for the release of Duke Nukem Forever 3D, we can now tell you that it will be out this year. We just can't tell you when this year, that's all. A new study released by PC Data shows that women now outnumber men in online gaming. And with the fairer sex also now accounting for 45% of the gaming market overall, it would seem that the girls, as in most walks of life, are basically taking over. Sega has been drip feeding us details of the highly anticipated Ferrari F355 Challenge 2. The main feature will be radically improved AI for the other drivers. So, a highly intelligent Ferrari driver. What will Sega think of next? That's it, but for more news and reviews, check out our website on gameplay.com slash bank. Now let's meet the four gamers brave enough to take on the challenges in round 10 of our European tour. Our first arrival is Sophie Blakemore from Slough in Berkshire. Well, if I was to win the £1,000, I think it would have to be a holiday, and with any change left over, buy a few new components for my computer. So maybe I can set up a LAN in my house or something, which could be quite greedy. Next, from Germany, comes wild man Olaf Hilgenfield. I think I'll buy a computer, maybe, or music hardware, because I need a my fourth machine for hard disk recording stuff. Third up is our French contestant, Léa Darmany from Coblet. If I won this prize, I pay my ticket for Australia next year. I'm going to stay there two months, July and August. And last but not least, our host contestant, Nelson Hardy from Sweden. I'd probably go out and buy myself a tattoo machine, actually. That's what I want to do. And there they are. As ever, we absolutely refuse to even consider starting the contest before our hosts have given us a gamer's view of their hometown. And here's what Nelson lined up for us. Yeah, this place is really cool. I'm not touching that spider. <laughs> no way. Oh, my. Who wants to go somewhere? Oh, you're so soft. 
Mm. Cool. Like a, yeah, let's go in. Cool, man. I want to try that one. <laughs> A lot of my friends have tattoos. Oh, last thing I pierced was my two belly button rings here. They're supposed to go like that, but they never hang like that. I enjoy Goldeneye a lot. I only play PlayStation and Counter Strike as well. Zelda's always been a favorite of mine. I really like Tetris. Are you going to get a PlayStation 2 when they come out? I don't think so. I'll probably wait for Nintendo's new console instead. This is quite 3D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Whoa! It's great. I mean, it feels like you're inside the game. Oh, no. <laughs> he likes hiding behind the corners. Very, very cool. I'm scared. I'm scared. Get him! I can't! I can't! This is where you get a really beautiful view of Stockholm. Hey, that's it. Wow. And if you fancy a trip to Stockholm, you can check out some of the places we visited on our website at gameplay.com slash bland. Now let's take a look at some of the games we're featuring this week, along with other essential bits and bobs, all on offer to you at an unrepeatable discount. Star Trek The Fallen uses a revolutionary multi-character system giving you three unique and compelling single-player experiences. Knuckle-whitening missions that demand stealth, dexterity, team communication and a broad assortment of weapons and gadgets will have you on the edge of your PC for months. Whilst in the Star Trek universe, we also have Star Trek Elite Force. Based on the Quake 3 game engine, but naturally improved and updated, all the player modes you'd expect are there, and thanks to direct access to the Paramount Library, the interiors and sound effects are literally just like the real thing. Feudal Japan, a time of immense bravery, loyalty and courage, and a time of deception, betrayal and murder. Enter the world of Shogun Total War, basically the most ambitious, epic and visually spectacular real-time strategy game ever created. The most exciting open wheel racing on the PC is at your fingertips. Grand Prix 3 has all the teams, all the cars and all the circuits. If you're a Formula 1 fan, then this is simply as close as you're going to get to the driving experience. Re-enter the secret world of the ninja in Tenchu 2, set before the blockbusting original at a time of crisis for the House of Goda. 29 unique day and night missions deliver the next level in the most authentic ninja stealth action adventure game series ever. That's it for this week. Remember, all these prices include postage and packing, and the products can normally be delivered to your own front door within five working days. OK, so the first of our three challenges is on its way. But by the end of the show, only one of our four contenders will be left standing. They'll be passing go and collecting a fistful of Swedish kroner on their way to a place in our grand final. Let's find out about game one. <laughs> Blinding fast action, fierce competition and neck-breaking speeds are the order of the day in our first challenge, Mag Force Racing. Collect magnet power to hang suspended as you race your tripod through futuristic cities in a display of driving skill that would leave Jeremy Coxon wading in a pool of his own drivel. With the usual power-ups and a huge array of weaponry to sort your enemies out, all in all it's a major contribution to road insanity. The fastest total time after three laps of the course wins. Fun. I feel pretty good, pretty confident actually. I think I found a good line. I'll do the best I can. I'm quite nervous at the moment. Yeah, you really don't know what was going to happen because you don't know what's going on behind. Okay, if you're all fueled up, go! So it's Britain and Sweden on the top of your screens, France and Germany on the bottom. Sophie not letting British manners hold her back. She's quickly up to sixth. 
and Olaf getting into a spectacular scrap with his opposition. They seem to have taken a disliking to him. Leah, meanwhile, is finding that spaceship control isn't one of her strong points. She's still running last. Nelson threw into sixth, but being fired on now and back to seventh, but he's not giving up. More scrapping elsewhere on the course as Olaf opens fire in the loop, going well into sixth at this point, but not as well as Nelson, using the ramp pack he's picked up to work his way through the field, taking third, and now second. And first to complete lap one is Nelson in one minute ten. Sophie driving a blinder to snatch second at this point, just over two seconds behind. Third comes Olaf, up to the lead in his race as he crosses the line, but not for long. And now Leah, just 35 seconds behind at this stage, looking good for France. Nelson's clear of his pack and trying to build a cushion between himself and Sophie. He can't afford to lose concentration for a second. Olaf, meanwhile, just can't seem to stay out of trouble. This sort of scrap is entertaining enough, but the race is slipping away from him. And it's Nelson who hangs on to cross the line in a total time of 3 minutes 20. Sophie follows him home 7 seconds behind. Next is Olaf, 3.36. And finally, guess who? Leah rockets past well over a minute later, and that's not quite the start the French girl was after. It feels nice to get 10 points, like the first, first grade. Rocketing into the lead with a warp factor of 10 is Nelson. Trailing in his wake is Sophie with a semi-stellar 8 points. Olaf is floating around aimlessly with a weightless 6. And Houston, we have a problem. It's a malfunctioning 3 points for Leah. Well, if you fancy your own copy of MagForce Racing, here's how you can get one. MagForce Racing is available for the Dreamcast, so if you want to visit new worlds and then drive around them like a madman, why not pick up a copy direct from Gameplay? Just ring this number or visit Gameplay's website or click and buy it through your own TV's interactive service. All prices include postage and packaging, and the game should be with you within five working days. So, as the dust settles on that round, it's time for another edition of Respect. <laughs> Whether we're watching a Hollywood blockbuster or an amazingly realistic intro sequence to a game, we all enjoy a good bit of animation. But what does the future hold for animation, especially in games? Well, who better to ask than Alias Wavefront, the world's leading innovators in 2D and 3D graphics? We met up with them at their 3 December event at the Millennium Dome to get their views on the vast world of animation. Animation is really cool. It makes you feel part of the game. It invites you into the game and makes you want to play it more. It uh, adds life to still inanimate objects and you just want to be there with it. There's so many games in the stores today and so many developers uh, rising from the woodwork. Uh, lots of them uh, trying to push the boundaries of game development. And we're finding that they're using our tools because it takes them to the next generation. So really, just about all of the top six in the uh, US charts today was done using uh, our software Maya. So, what can we expect from the next generation? Well, intro sequences such as the Final Fantasy series are renowned for their cinematic quality. But now, with the introduction of groundbreaking animation technology, the quality of graphics previously only seen in intro sequences will now be seen throughout the gameplay. There's a whole host of next generation consoles coming out and Alias Wavefront are trying to meet the needs by developing the tools that are suitable for the consoles. There's a huge advantage for everybody creating for next generation because we're moving away from polygon-based models, which means that things look really blocky, and so all the consumers are going to start to see really nice, smooth, curved models, curved characters. So really, that type of technology is going to make everybody's future gameplay much better. Now, something to set your thumbs twitching with anticipation. It's our roundup of the best games of the new year in the top 10 charts. In at number 10, it's a new entry for American McGee's Alice, the warped masterpiece where even a white rabbit can be pretty scary. And at 9, it's Tomb Raider Chronicles making a return visit and reminding us not to write Lara off just yet. Chicken Run is another new entry at 8, the Hollywood blockbuster making the jump from plaster scene to pixels very nicely, thank you. Slipping another place for number 7, the magical parent touch finally wearing off for who wants to be a millionaire. And at six, it's Pokemon Pinball. Yellow Fever continues to have a stranglehold on the country. Championship managers relegated from last week's runner-up spot. Sheepskin coats, chewing gum and foul language all round. And in at four, it's a surprise appearance for Counter-Strike. A low price means that if you haven't got it already, now's your chance. 
At three, it's up four places for Bond, Her Majesty's Finest, displaying the sort of stamina he's famous for in The World Is Not Enough. And slipping from last week's top spot, it's Shen Yui, the masterful role-playing extravaganza, rudely barged out of the way by this week's number one. WWF Smackdown 2 jumps back into the ring, hurling scripted abuse at all and sundry. Right. Welcome to Blam. I'm Jules Reed, and we're back in London for the culmination of our series, the Blam Grand Final. We've been on the road for a hectic three months, sleeping rough, sampling the sights, and experiencing the culture firsthand as the best of European gaming talent has battled to be here today. On the way, we've painted some of Europe's finest cities a serious shade of red, and here are just a few of the highlights. It's a sensory overload. It's a very, very aggressive game get used to the fact of Prince Nassim winning every fight. I'm a complete obsessive. I mean, I just am obsessed with making games. It's a professional, grown-up industry. No matter what they say and no matter what they do, I'm the best the Street Fighter team. is so... I can't see why the top pro gamers can't be regarded as celebrities in their own right. The biggest game by far has to be Counter-Strike. I think it's the best thing I've ever played on the Dreamcast, to be honest. I mean, I got addicted, but I couldn't even leave the couch, it was so awesome. I have a PlayStation, that's my first wife, and I have my wife, that's my second wife. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> we started off with 48 gamers, and now we are down to 12. But they're all champions in their own right, and they've all fought long and hard to be here today. In a few moments, we're going to ask them to come into this, the Blam Arena. But first, here's what else we've managed to cram into this week's show. There's the holiday of a lifetime up for grabs, as the best gamers in Europe get it on with the widest range of gaming platforms ever assembled on British television. We'll be gazing into the future to see what spring and summer have in store for the gaming world in three special editions of the news. We've got some special offers for you at home that are so special they'd make a special reunion concert by the specials that's frankly ordinary. Plus, if you want a piece of the action, we've got an audience competition that'll blow your mind. All that is coming your way in the next 30 minutes. But first, here's a reminder of who's who in our gaming equivalent of the Dirty Dozen. Our first winner was 27-year-old Frenchman Octave Defon. Next came our ponytail German friend Vasily Pesano. Round three was taken by British civil servant Rob Howard. He was followed by another local girl, 25-year-old Holly Chan, and completing a trio of British winners was actor Philip Schurer. Next came our youngest finalist, 20-year-old Robert Adarjuk from Germany. Round seven was taken by Swedish student Tobias Lin. After him came British anarchist Robbie Ray. And then our second Swede, 23-year-old Bjorn Lund, followed by our second girl, British lad Sophie Blakemore. Round 11 was claimed by the granddaddy of the tournament, 31-year-old Thomas Wagner from Germany. And squeezing into the finals in our last heat was Frenchman Cédric Drucourt. So, those are our gamers, but what will they be playing? Well, we've got 10 games across every platform imaginable, from PlayStation 2 to Atari, from arcades to mobile phones, with every PC, Dreamcast, and Game Boy in between. It's 12 points for top score, down to a miserable one for the humiliation of coming last. The scores will be entered into a league table, and then at the end of the day, it'll be the top four who go through to compete again tomorrow. They've taken their seats, so let the battle commence. I wasn't as good at Voyager as I hoped I would have been, although it was my game out of all of these today. Sophie, enter your lovely board to play. Um, the old school games, I think. Have you had your best games with it yet? Or? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Space Invaders is the best. Are you going to be at the top half no. of the table? No. Where are you going to be? Uh, well, maybe in the middle. Can you win? Is Germany feeling good today? When we count our points together, <laughs> <laughs> So, can we have the scores? Please. 
Leading the way is Vasily on 14 points, followed by Octav and Robbie on 13 and 12 respectively. And the rest of the field are close behind. Vasily, the scores have just been revealed for the fourth game. Yeah. You're in first position. Yeah, I, I know, but it's a surprise. Well, none of our contestants should be counting their chickens just yet. Only four can rule the roost and end up stuffing the opposition. But which four? There's only one way to find out, and that's by getting back to the arena. How are you feeling about today? I'm feeling good. I need more coffee. Do you like driving games? Yeah. Are you good? No. Are you concentrating? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Are you feeling lucky? I hope so. Are you using the same strategy that you used to use when you were a kid? Oh, I don't know. I'm not doing as well as I seem to remember that I used to do as a kid. Do you think you're in with a chance of winning? I think so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I hope so. We're just working out the scores, and while we've got our calculators out, here's a quick look at what's due in coming months for all you Dreamcast devotees. After Sega's initial advertising campaign, boasting of a possible six billion players at a time for the Dreamcast, over a year later, a game comes along that could finally fulfill that promise. That game is, of course, Fantasy Star Online. The first massively multiplayer RPG designed for a home console, it uses the Dreamcast modem to allow gamers access to distant lands populated with real players within the Fantasy Star universe. Other big games due out this year for the console include Sonic Adventure 2, Half-Life and Daytona USA 2001, which can be played over the net against up to 16 other gamers. Plus, of course, a new star in the form of Lionhead's much anticipated black and white. Overall, however, the long-term future for Sega's baby looks bleak. And there'll be more on the future of gaming later in the show. But in the here and now, shall we have the scores? Sophie's in contention with 34. Cedric is the best of the rest with a healthy 36. But our top four with just three games to go are Octar with 41, Vasily with 42, and Thomas and Robbie sharing the lead with 45 points apiece. Can you do it? Can you hold on to the position that you're in tomorrow? I will. Yeah? I will. So I could do it maybe. Oh, come on. Yeah. Well, not too bad. There. And I've got some good games coming up as well. Do not give up yet. Get back to your consoles. <laughs> Which nation deserves to win? Hi, German. <laughs> so, day one is over. Our 12 competitors have all played 10 games, and that makes 120 battles in total. But after all that digital dexterity, who are the top four gamers who've made it through to day two of our grand final? Our winner for today is Robbie! 89 points! In second, but a full 10 points adrift, is Thomas with 79. The third spot goes to Cedric with 77, pulling himself up from fifth in the last three games. And sneaking in by the back door to claim the last of our four places, also with 77 points, is Octal. Let's see who missed out. Vasily, so close with 74, but just not close enough. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, I didn't think to do that, but I'm just uh, proud. I haven't got the pressure because uh, I think he's going to win tomorrow, so yeah. no pressure from yeah. me. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Normally we want to go shopping, but okay. I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> what let you down specifically? Formula One. So I wasn't expecting to get that high up the scoreboard, so I'm pretty chuffed. So, as day one comes to a close, it's a fond farewell to our eight losers. We'll be getting stuck into all the action that day two has in store in just a minute. But first, let's check out this week's oh-so-special special offers. 
Power Stone's a fast 3D fighting game that combines fully interactive worlds with truly spectacular graphics. Unleash your character's true strength by collecting Power Stones to transform him into a raging super being capable of executing deadly power fusion moves. Enjoy the most complete Bond experience ever with Tomorrow Never Dies for the PlayStation 1. Use your cunning and wit, along with a few of the old gadgets, to survive multiple levels of espionage over 10 missions involving third-person shooting, skiing and driving game modes. James Bond. Welcome to the online role-playing game, Asheron's Call, where thousands of players inhabit the richest setting yet in which to make friends and seek out perilous adventure. Customize your alter ego with a unique appearance and balance of heroic skills. Then enter a magical frontier of terrible monsters and breathtaking vistas. For new insights into the dark history of Lara Croft, look no farther than the Tomb Raider Chronicles. Four unique scenarios from the past reveal more about characters from other adventures and bring new features, weapons, moves and animations from Lara. What more could you give your PlayStation for under 15 quid? But we're not forgetting all you Dreamcast-based Lara fans. Tomb Raider 4 has an epic storyline with more twists and turns than an Egyptian labyrinth, coupled with highly evolved AI and a fully interactive environment. This is a heart-stopping action adventure that truly offers the last revelation. That's it for this week and this series. Remember, all these prices include postage and packing and are valid for the next seven days only. Welcome to day two of our Blam Grand Final. After the gaming apocalypse that was day one, we're now down to four competitors. They'll be playing three games and then the top two will play head-to-head -head in our fourth and final challenge. Do you think you can do it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Everything is possible, you know? Uh, I feel a bit nervous. I'm really tired. Really, really tired. I'm not hardly any sleep. I'm happy to be here and we will see. It depends on the game. Do you think the others are a bit scared of you? Uh, no, I think no, they're just saying that, you know? trying to psych me out. <laughs> when I arrived yesterday, I thought um, it would be good when I get on the fifth or sixth place, that, that's good. But now, I was in second place. Are you thinking about that holiday? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> in just a moment, our Fab Four will be taking their seats. All we need is a true challenge to test their abilities to the limit. <laughs> Our gamers will need a steady hand, nerves of steel and a deadly aim in our first game, Silent Scope, for the fully loaded PlayStation 2. This classic arcade conversion offers gamers the chance to join the fight against international terrorism, taking part in a variety of missions, culminating in saving the President's family, if they want to. But before we sent them out into the big bad world, we wanted our contestants to hone their skills on the firing range. Lock onto the target with the naked eye, then slide the sights over, take aim, and fire. The quicker and more accurate you are, the better your score. Okay, it's time to sort the sharp shooters from those who couldn't hit a barn door. And we start with Octav, showing how it should be done on level 1. 100% accuracy in 33 seconds. Over to Cedric for level 2, and the Frenchman looking confident. He'd be a pretty useful man to know if the world was ever invaded by Maros. 88% accuracy takes his points total to 8,900 to date. Thomas is just 700 points behind him as he tackles the moving targets. The trick here is not to flick the sights over too early, and he's going well. Over 90% accuracy there is way ahead of the others. So we come to the final round. Cedric is last with 18,100, Robbie 100 ahead of him, Octav on 18,500, but Thomas is the clear leader on 20,000. Robbie was lying second after round one, but he's struggling here. Don't shoot innocent people, the man says, and that's good general advice in anyone's book. But he's taken out another, and just 200 points in that round drops him to four. Thomas has also decided to concentrate on the good guys, actually losing points on that round to finish on 19,800. So it's the French duo who keep their heads to wind up the sharpest of our shooters. Congratulations, Octave. Thank you. Are you into shooting games normally? Yeah, uh, that's my kind of game. I imagine that was shooting Thomas and Robbie on the game, so I said, <laughs> that's why I was so good. Was this your type of game? Yeah, I like this. But I wasn't good enough. Once you wake up, I'll be all right. <laughs> It's Octave who ends up hitting the bullseye, 10 points for him. Into second place with a bullet is Cedric with 8. Thomas shot himself in the foot in the last round, an erratic 6. And Robbie probably thinks a loaded magazine is something you buy in a news agent. And if you fancy yourself as a bit of a crack shot, here's how to get a copy of Silent Scope in your sights. Silent Scope is available from gameplay for both the PlayStation 2 and the Dreamcast. 
All you need to do is call this number, visit our website, or just click and buy it through your own TV's interactive shopping service. Our phone lines are open now, delivery is free, and the game should be with you within five working days. Now let's take a quick break from the action. Here's what to expect from Nintendo this year. The only thing that's kept the old N64 going this long is the Pokemon phenomenon. However, there are a few great games throughout this year, namely Conker's Bad Fur Day, Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver, Paper Mario and Dinosaur Planet. It'll be the last year for the console, however, as everything gets geared up for the GameCube. Delayed until 2002 in Europe, the GameCube will be the only pure games machine available, as you won't be able to play DVDs on it, and it won't ship with a modem. Nintendo are getting far more excited about their Game Boy Advance, however, promising to ship 28 million units in its first year. The handheld does have some competition, though, in the form of Bandai's Wonder Swan Color, which sold out in just one day after its launch in Japan. Nintendo have now asked retailers to stop making pre-orders for the Advance as an official pre-order system will be implemented shortly with an eye on the July release date. If there really is no rest for the wicked, then our gamers must be very bad indeed because we're throwing them straight into the next challenge and here's what they're going to be facing. It's time for our players to kick off a feast of football with the striking FIFA 2001 on the PlayStation 2. Some fantastic character modelling, smoother and more intuitive playability and a huge variety of camera angles are all in evidence as the PS2 shows off what it can do with this, the latest addition to the FIFA family. Defenders mark their counterparts with increased accuracy and new improved through passes allow you to tear the opposition apart, all of which should make for a great contest. We won't be paying our gamers 50 grand a week, but we will be expecting results as they prepare for a pitch battle. Goalkeeper is very strong, you can shoot whatever, stop everything, so if you are lucky you can win, so it will be very tight. I hate soccer games, football games, so we yeah. see it. This is like the first football game I've played since like Mega Drive days. So I have to beat Robbie because when, I, when he wins I'm out of the game. It's semi-finals time, but we won't be making the draw by playing around with silly balls in a bag like the FA. Oh no, here we draw straws. Our Frenchmen are pitted against each other, as are Thomas and Robbie. And it was the two Frenchmen in our first semi-final as Bordeaux took on Lyon. Cedric found the measure of Octave in the second half, scoring twice in quick succession to book his place in the final. The other semi saw England take on Germany as Manchester United did battle with Bayern Munich and lost. This opening exchange looked promising, but in the end, just one goal from Yanker after 67 minutes was enough to seal it. The losers' final saw Robbie beaten 2-0 by Octave in atrocious weather conditions. This effort sealing it for the Frenchman. And so did the big match. Some good keeping early on wasn't enough to stop Thomas taking the lead, but poor defending from the German led to this messy equaliser early in the second half. And with less than 10 minutes remaining, it was Cedric who went on to take it, just managing to trickle this winner past the unfortunate German. I like it, yeah, but um, it's a little bit difficult and he was so good, I have no chance. Soccer is really a good game for me. I told you one million times I was lucky, but this time I was very lucky. Are you gutted? Yeah, a little bit, but yeah, it's all got fun, in it? Firing one into the top corner of our table is Cedric with 18 points. Octave down to second, but still in contention, 16 for him. Hacking about in midfield is Thomas with 14. And running around the park like a headless chicken is Robbie with just six points. And if you have a love of the beautiful game but don't fancy getting cold and muddy, here's how you can score a copy for yourself. Practice your fancy footwork with FIFA 2001, which is available through gameplay even as I speak. You can pick it up for less than your average high street price by calling this number, visiting our website or through your own TV's interactive shopping service. Our phone lines are open 24 hours a day and if you order now, you should be taken to the pitch in three to five working days. Now, I don't want to worry them, but out of our original 48 gamers, only two will be left after this round. Our contestants face a slippery slope as they prepare to do battle with SSX Snowboarding Supercross for the PlayStation 2 and as ever the game is available from gameplay through any of the channels you see on your screen now. Incredible attention to detail has resulted in this genre defining and system justifying game. As you hurtle down a variety of lengthy courses you can perform little tricks to feed your adrenaline meter and then take from your store as you put together those big ticket combos. It's the total points tally for these that will count at the end of the day. Um, I think quite good because I've got a good position. It's really a great game, but it's very hard. I have to win this game. It's my last chance. Okay, I don't need to tell anybody how much is riding on this. Good luck, everyone. 
And they've all got away well. Britain and Germany on the top of your screen. There are two Frenchmen on the bottom. It's Robbie offering the early entertainment, upholding Britain's winter sports reputation. And also getting into the thick of things is Thomas. First he pulls off this, 720 with double forward flip. And then this, face first forward smash through sign. It's an eventful run for Germany. Cedric, meanwhile, has picked up his trick booster and is having another attempt at a forward flip. Well, that's the closest he's come so far. Robbie is getting it all together at last, and that's a nice little earner for the British lad. And here comes Octav's chance to score. Clipping the wall, and that's going to affect his takeoff. And his landing, as it turns out. So, across the line, mainly in one piece, it's Thomas scoring 16,150 to win, with Robbie finally waking up to take second with 13,990. And they're followed home by Octav and Cedric in third and fourth, respectively. Well, you said you had to win that to be with a chance of winning the holiday, and you did! Yeah. Are you pleased? <laughs> yeah, very. Did very, you enjoy very, that game? Yeah. I, I like it, and I made no mistakes in this round. It was okay. You've had a shocker, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think pressure killing me at the end. So, here are the scores after three rounds of scorching competition. Face planting in fourth with 14 points is our Robbie. And it's all slipped away from Cedric, who was leading, but now misses out by just one point with a total of 21 for third. So, it's Octal with 22 and Thomas with 24 who go on to compete for our grand prize. Our last two gamers are so close to that round the world trip, they can almost touch it. To make them wait now would raise the tension to near unbearable levels. And that's exactly what we're going to do. What can we expect in 2001 generally? This year, the PlayStation 2 has to achieve a massive user base as the GameCube and Xbox will soon be arriving. So far, the games have been largely disappointing. But every game that seems to be waiting for Gran Turismo 3 out in the spring, Metal Gear Solid 2 out in the autumn, or a range of conversions, including Half-Life and Unreal Tournament. Microsoft's Xbox has slipped to early 2002, just like GameCube. But in the meantime, the important news is who's been signed up to produce games for it. Key developers include EA and Konami, who will be producing a Metal Gear Solid 2 conversion called Metal Gear Solid X. Generally, this is a year for the PlayStation 2 to establish itself and for the GameCube and Xbox to get some great games developed for their launches. The best thing by far will be the arrival of the Game Boy Advance, which should follow on from the Game Boy to become the most popular console of all time. Playing four-player Mario Kart with your mates using four advances will be the gaming experience of the year. That's it for the series, but for constantly updated news and reviews, check out our website on gameplay.com slash bank. In just a few short minutes, one of our two contestants will be quite literally taking a holiday when they walk off with £15,000 worth of this. Yep, it's our four-week round-the-world trip, staying in luxury accommodation and with spending money thrown in. Japan, Australia, Hawaii and the States. It's all there for the taking, courtesy of Microsoft Sidewinder. So previous points count for nothing. It is all down to this game. But what game can justify such a momentous occasion? Well, there can really only be one. For the final challenge on the Blam European Tour, we have the Immortal, Pong. Armed with nothing more than a straight line, our finalists will be batting a dot about the screen as if it were a live grenade. From the multitude of Pong games, including the famous squash and the completely different football, we've chosen Pong Tennis to test our gamers. Like the graphics, the aim of the game is simple. The first person to 21 points wins. I used to play with this game 15 years ago, yeah. I was absolutely surprised that we play Pong as last game. That's fantastic. Fifteen years ago, I was good. Now, I don't know. <laughs> what is going through your mind right now? Nothing. Let's do it. So, the time has come to find out who will be the Blam Grand Champion. So, for the last time, are you ready? I'm ready. Focused? Focused. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So, Thomas on the left, Octav on the right, and the German takes the first point. And a few points later, Octav has taken control at 1-5. Five. 5-8, five, you can feel the tension. Wimbledon Centre Court eats your heart out. Thomas has made a comeback, and it's all square 14 points apiece. Octav's really going for it now. 17, 19. Remember, it's the first to 21. So has the Frenchman got the bottle. Yes, he's done it. 
from 17 to Oxab. What a victory! A great winner and a gallant loser. I thought about nothing, you know? Just return the ball and that's it. May we proudly present you with your prize, your round the world ticket. Congratulations. And you are down the room. So we've had 13 weeks of intense gaming competition. Some of the best gamers from all over Europe have battled and raced each other in the hope of victory. Now, although we thank and congratulate them all, there can only be one winner. Now here's your final chance to get in all the action with this week's audience competition. And up for grabs this week, we've got a bundle of goodies totaling £1,000 for Microsoft. To enter, just answer the simple question. Pong was in fact the second home video game ever sold. What was the name of the first? Was it A, Ping, B, Odyssey, or C, WWF, The Early Years? And as ever, if you think you know the answer, call us on 0906 616 3000, or email us from the Blam competition site at gameplay.com slash Blam, or contact us through the Gameplay Shopping Channel on your TV's interactive service provider. Good luck. Well, we've had a fantastic few months with some incredible gaming action from the best of Europe's cities. We've gone bonkers in Berlin, we stormed Stockholm, we've parted in Paris, and we've gone large in London. In fact, we've had so much fun, we're going to do it all again. But until we do, thanks for joining us and have a great time gaming. Gameplay are the UK's leading direct-to-home retailers of computer games. All the games featured on this show, along with hundreds of others, are available to buy direct, over the phone, on the net, or through your own TV's interactive shopping service. Our phone lines are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Competition in the flesh and plenty of it, next with World Wrestling Federation Live Wire. If you'd like to be a contestant in any future series of Blam, then you can get in touch with us at this address. Blam was produced by Gameplay, direct-to-home retailers of video games, equipment and online play services. As such, this program has been classified as TV advertising.